This is where we're getting going to get into all of the devices that you'll see on that power wording quiz that you'll need to look in. You'll probably need to read this section in your textbook from 143 to 146 a little bit more carefully before you take that power wording quiz. But what we're going to look at now is how do you create figurative images in your speech? How do you use words to create an image for the audience that they will remember? The first thing you can do is use metaphors and similes. Remember, a simile is a less direct comparison, but it includes the word like or as. Metaphor is a implied comparison. There's an example on the bottom of 143 that is actually in the quiz as well. So without looking at that, you'll probably get that answer wrong. So I would definitely do that. The next thing is personification. And this is where you attribute personal qualities or human qualities to inanimate things or items. So if a building is weeping, if a flower is nodding hello, those would all be examples of personification. So that's figurative images. Next is how we create drama. And there's a couple of things we do. Short sentences can express vitally important thoughts much more powerful than you would think. So you want to take a look at short sentences like that. Use omission. That means you leave out a word or a phrase that the audience expects to hear. But the word you leave out, it has to be understood by your listener or at the very end of, let's say, four or five sentences, you reveal what it is. Again, your textbook has a good example there uh, about omitting the words mountain climber to add drama, saying, here's a quote, direct quote from a speech on mountain climbing, only five of the 16, 16 who set out to scale the peak would ever return. Five of the 16. Well, mountain climbers isn't there, but you can tell that that gives a little bit more drama. Inversion, reverse the normal word or order of a phrase or sentence. Again, there's an example in there that would be very helpful for you to review before you take that quiz. Sus suspension, it's where we suspend the, the word or phrase and we put it at the end of the sentence. So this is different than omission where I said you have four or five sentences and then finally you may refer to whatever it is or you don't necessarily have to because the audience knows, but maybe you do. Suspension is I put the, the thing that I want them to key in on at the very end. In addition to creating figurative images and creating drama, we can also create cadence. And the way we do that is with parallelism. And that's when two or more clauses or sentences have the same grammatical pattern. Again, look at the example in your textbook on page 145. Same number of words is what you're looking for in these phrases. And the same basic subject verb construction will signify parallelism. The antithesis, so many students call this the antithesis, please don't do that. Antithesis, say it with me, antithesis, good. And this means opposition, so what you do is you start with parallel structures of two phrases, but there's contrasting meanings. Your textbook gives our true destiny is not to be ministered unto, but to minister to ourselves. So it says, this is what it's not, and this is what it is. So again, refer to that when you're taking the quiz. Repetition, the, re rep the repeating of a keyword or phrase, it gives kind of a rhythm and a power. And again, the bottom of page 145, it reads, our job is not finished if we fail to recognize that each generation has its own unique problems and perceptions when it comes to race and, neth and ethnicity. And it keeps going on. We can ensure our rules and regulations are clear and fair, but our job is not finished if people believe. And then at the end, our job is not finished if the rules and regulations. So that repeated mantra, our job is not finished, it rings in the audience member's mind long after your speech is done and they leave doing it. Obama did the we can do it. And he repeated that again and again. And people, I'm sorry, speech writers really like repetition. Last but not least is alliteration. I'm sure you know this from grade school. This is the repetition of a consonant sound. And that means uh, discipline, direction, confidence, courage. 
using it sparingly can actually have great power. So when you're writing things, you may consider changing words and phrases, even, even in your editing process, to include alliteration because it does sound nice and it gives it a cadence. It gives it a drama. So that's all I have for you today. Real quick video. I'm going to give you a little uh, tip here. You'll get two extra credit points if you can tell me what kind of dog I have. And I'll ask each of you to write that down on a sheet of paper because when we went down that abstraction ladder, I told you what kind of dog I have. You'll need to be as specific as possible, include all the details I gave you. And if you bring that written to class on a sheet of paper, two points of extra credit will be awarded for watching this video. See you guys later. Have a great week and we'll see you next Friday.